Greetings from Kenwall. Today is Wednesday, November 30th, 2022. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the Bible being literally true. You know, I have heard from many Christians that all that matters is that we believe in the virgin birth and that Jesus died on the cross and literally rose from the dead. Many of these people will say to you that the rest of the Bible really doesn't matter a lot and that a whole bunch of the scripture cannot be taken literally. In the magazine, Christianity Today, they did a survey asking people if they believe the Bible is literally true. Here is what they found. Let me start with the general populace. As you can see in 2016, 44% of the people believe that the Bible is not true. In 2018, 47%. 2020, 48%. And then there was a big increase in 2022, where now 53% of the general populace believe that the Bible cannot be trusted and that it is not literally true. Now next, here is a graph for what Christians believe. As you can see in 2016, 70, sorry, 17% did not believe that the Bible can be taken literally. 2018, it rises to 23%. But look at 2020, it is now only 15% of Christians who do not believe that the Bible can be taken literally. That was during COVID. And I wonder with all the doom and gloom, whether Christians were looking to God for support. Then, in 2022, it is now the highest percentage ever at 26%. So now we have 26% of Christians who do not believe that the Bible is literally true. And personally, I think that's really bad. Over the next few weeks, I want to look at some of the reasons you can believe that the Bible is true. Today I'm going to tell you two stories from archaeology that show how literally true our Bible is. The first thing I want to look at is the city of Ai. Now, for a long time, critics said that the Bible is wrong because it talks about the city called Ai, and the critics say that there was never a city of Ai, and archaeology has proved this. But when you look at the city of Ai has been mentioned many times in the Bible. The first time we hear about it is in Genesis 12, verse 8, as a place where Abraham, or Abram at that time, camped during his journey toward the land God promised him. And it was here in Ai where he built an altar and called upon the name of the Lord. Then in Joshua 7, we have Joshua sending out his men from their amazing conquest of Jericho to the city of Ai. It is here where Joshua suffers his first defeat because a man named Achan had taken items from Jericho that God told them not to do. Then, of course, in Joshua 8, we have a great description about the battle to conquer Ai. And I want you to notice when you read it, there are some very meticulous details that are mentioned. The first is, that I is adjacent to Beth Avon. That's found in Joshua 7 2. And it is east of and near to Bethel. That says in, that's in Joshua 7 2 and 12 verse 9. The first thing it says that they have a militarily significant hill north of I where the Israelite army camped. That's found in Joshua 8 verse 11. And they said it was close to a shallow valley north where Joshua and the decoy fourth force could be seen by the king of Ai. So very meticulous details. So archaeologists, they believe that the only possible site for Ai was at Et Tel. In 1924, in between 1964 and 1970, they excavated the entire area around Et Tel, but found nothing. That is when the critics 
said once and for all that archaeologists have shown conclusively that I never existed. But, and I love this, legends from the local people said that I was located in a different area. It was called Kirbet el Makatir. Well, a group of archaeologists, they believe what the locals have said, and they started digging in the area. Between 1995 and 2017, archaeologists uncovered a fortified city from the time of Joshua that is conclusively proven to be I. You know, that is amazing. Once again, the Bible is right and the critics are wrong. Now, I have a personal story about I. One of my customers, who is a minister and also an amateur archaeologist, he came over to my house and told me, Ken, I got great news. They have discovered the city of I from the Bible. And the group in Israel wanted him to participate in the digging. He came to me and he asked me, oh, Ken, could I have some tweezers and a loop? And I said, sure. Well, the neat thing is that when he got back from the dig, he came back and gave me back my, my tweezers, tweezers and my loop, and he gave me a whole bunch of the pottery that came directly from I. I have to tell you, I will always treasure this pottery. You know, what a wonderful thing to own. Now, I think you're going to love the second story, which is about Mitmash Pass. Just to refresh your memory, the account is found in 1 Samuel 14 and tells us that Saul's son Jonathan takes his armor bearer with him to go to confront the Philistines. He finds these cliffs that lead up to where some of the Philistine soldiers are guarding the pass. Since there were numerous soldiers at the top of Michmash Pass, the soldiers mockingly told Jonathan and his armor bearer to come up since they outnumbered them greatly and were going to kill them. But God was with Jonathan and they vanquished around 20 soldiers at the top of Michmas Path. When the rest of the army looked up and saw Jonathan and his army, two things happened. In fact, two things happened miraculously because of God. The entire Philistine army was struck into a great panic and God caused the ground to shake. Because of this, the entire Philistine army was in a state of panic. And then eventually you read the story, God led Saul's army to a great victory over the Philistines. So by now, you are most asking, what does this have to do with the Bible being literally true. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. And it's a really neat story. This story once again reiterates how wonderfully accurate our Bible is. So let's go fast forward to World War I. Now one fact about World War I that many of you probably do not know is that the vast majority of soldiers carried a Bible with them. When they got to to the land of Philistine, all sorts of people read their Bible, the soldiers read their Bible, because they wanted to get an idea what it was like in that surrounding. And they knew that the surroundings really have not changed in the last few thousand years. Well, so now we have the troops, the British troops in Palestine for several months. And the forces under General Allen By prepared to attack an area known as Mikmash. Thinking the name sounded very familiar, one of the majors under Allenby pulled out his Bible and began searching for the name Mikmash. He soon discovered that it was the site of a very famous surprise attack undertaken by Jonathan, the son of Saul, of course, Israel's first king. The historical account picks up the story. And the major read on how Jonathan went through the pass called Mikmash between Bazes and sen -A and climbed the hill, dragging his armor bearer with him until he came to a place high up, about 
and ha but a half acre of land where a yoke of oxen might plow. And the Philistines who were there awoke, thought they were surrounded by the armies of Saul, and Saul had a great victory because of everything. Well, the brigade major thought to himself, this pass, these two rocky headlands and flat piece of ground are probably still there. They knew that very little had changed in Palestine throughout the centuries. And he went and he woke up the Brigadier General Allenby. Together, they read the story over again. Then the General sent out scouts who came back and reported, We found the pass! We can't believe it! And not only that, but it's very thinly guarded by the Turks, with rocky crags on either side. Obviously, Bosses and Senna, whilst in the distance, high up in Micmash, the moonlight was shining on a flat piece of ground, just about big enough for a team to plow. This is amazing stuff. Well, the general decided then and there to change the plan of attack. Instead of the whole brigade, one infantry, infantry company alone advanced at the dead of night along the pass of Mishbash. And in his account, he said, a few Turks met with, were silently dealt with. We passed between Bothes and Senna. We climbed the hillside and just before dawn found ourselves on a flat piece of ground. The Turks who were asleep awoke thought they were surrounded by the armies of Allenby and fled in disorder. Yeah, once again, just like what happened in the Old Testament. And he says, we killed or captured every Turk that night in Micmash so that after thousands of years, the tactics of Saul and Jonathan's were repeated with success by a British force. You know, when you look at it, if General Allenby and his forces had not familiarized themselves with the Bible, they would have completely missed the hidden knowledge which made their victory possible. Once again, you see how incredibly accurate our Bible is. You can rely on everything in the Bible as being literally correct. May the good Lord be with you until we meet again.